Hello, everybody. Father Edward here, and very happy to share about another movie that's coming to theaters. And I have a feeling that this is going to be one of those sports movies that we're going to talk about for decades to come. I think you all know those movies. Remember the Titans or Rudy. Those are movies that I saw when I was a kid, and people are still talking about them to this day. And uh, there's a new movie called The Hill, and it's featuring the story of Ricky Hill. And uh, I'm happy to be speaking with Ricky and with Jeff, who's the director of the movie. It's coming to theaters August 25th. And uh, so let's learn a little bit about the movie. So thanks so much, the two of you, for joining me. And maybe I'll just go right to Ricky first and uh, maybe just tell me a little bit about your story. So people are going to go watch basically a, a biopic of your life and, and your struggles and how you played sports. But what are some of the highlights of your life that are featured in this film? Well, I mean, I, I mean, it started from, it started from the struggles of being born, at that at the beginning. Um, from that point on, uh, I, I created the, the love of ba baseball, which uh, it's kind of hard to be loving a game that you can't really participate in because of uh, the way you were born. Uh, but then, um, my father was a Baptist minister, and um, I got, you know, I'm kind of, I've kind of got a quick choice here to really make in my life, being a minister or being um, a professional baseball player, I say, hoping to be one of the two. The easier route would have been the ministry, <laughs> but uh, saying that, um, uh, that's kind of the, my story is, is that my father wanted me to be in the minister. I wanted to be a baseball player. But I also had to go through a lot of turmoil to get there because the um, problems that I had, physical problems with my legs as a child, created a lot of problems for me to even think about playing, including and think about even playing Little League Baseball, much less playing any further on. So that is a big start of my life. That's how my life started out. The movie kind of portrays the fact that you were a good hitter, but you couldn't run. It was that basically it. Well, I, I could run. I could run. I was just now coming back from running because I broke my ankle. I'd snapped it for the com compound uh, wound all the way through my ankle, and uh, to make it to make it back, it took a lot of work to for this special surgery, and I did make it back and. Uh, uh next the next thing you know i'm running not full speed but i'm i'm getting i'm working hard to get there i'll put it that way and so before, before we started this conversation i was speaking with jeff and he was telling me that this is a story that was 17 years in the making so i'm curious jeff how did you come across ricky's story and why did it take so long to make this movie well, um, I, I want to just segue into something with that that you mentioned in the beginning that you love these kind of movies. Um, and I also love these kind of movies. They're my favorite movies. And um, I wanted, uh, there was a movie that was iconic to me, Rudy. And once I had found this script, and I'll tell you the story about that in a second, um, I decided I wanted Angelo Pisa, the writer of Rudy and Hoosiers, to write it. And that's who we got to write the script. I got Angelo Pizzo on and I got Scott Marshall Smith to help um, add in the faith element of the film, which I thought needed to be worked on a little more and more authentic and real. Um, so what happened was my brother was in a lobby of a hotel um, on business and he was sitting directly next to Ricky Hill. And Ricky was on the phone telling someone he was looking for a film director. And he was having horrible luck in Hollywood, meeting all these people that he didn't feel were honest or had faith or they weren't the right people for this movie. And my brother overheard the whole thing. And when Ricky hung up, my brother leaned over very, very like my brother to just, you know, go right into somebody and talk to him. And he said, I have the perfect guy for your film. My brother's a film director and he's perfect. And Ricky kind of looked at him like, yeah, I've heard that story before. And um, to make a long story short, um, I read the script that night it overtook me. I just fell in love with it. It was a perfect movie to me. It needed to be rewritten to make it a bigger, more theatrical story, which is what I wanted. That's why we brought Angelo on to adapt it. And Ricky and I met the next day. I showed Ricky 
I don't believe in talking. I believe in doing just like this movie. I don't believe in telling people this is a good movie. I believe in people to go see it and you tell me because I know it's an amazing movie. I've seen it, what it does to people. So all family members can go. Every kind of kid, uh, every kind of person could go see this movie. If you have a family, you'll love it. If you don't have a family, you'll love it. If you love baseball, you'll love it. If you don't love baseball, you'll love it. If you go to church and you're and you're a Christian or you're a, a person of faith, you will love this movie. If you don't, you'll still love this movie. And you might actually get something out of it. You know, so all those elements are what drew me to it. And how it got made was my, literally my brother in a lobby met him and um we i went and showed ricky on a, i put together a little film of other movies that i thought would tell him the story of the hill and how i was going to shoot it how it would look musically and everything and i had to meet his partner and sell him on the fact i was the guy and i did that and then you asked the question of how why did it take so long well it's not easy to get these kind of movies made because Hollywood wants to make Marvel movies. They don't want to make anything that makes people think or has any kind of message. And they also don't think sports movies work. But I kept trying to tell them, really? Like a movie like The Rookie or Rudy or Remember the Titans or The Love of the Game or these didn't work? <laughs> you know. And so I just never gave up on the movie. I never, I, I actually had it funded four different times and the financing always fell through into some really weird reason. Most of the time people didn't have the money, but they said they did. I don't understand why people do that in the film business, but they're like, I can fund this movie. And then when it comes to writing the check, they don't do it. They don't have it. So this movie was up and running in Utah at one time, then for Texas, then it was up and running in Oklahoma, both tax rebate states. And then um, when I finally found this angel who came to me and funded this movie two years ago, it ended up going to Georgia because that's where they were from. And I wanted to kind of film in their area so they could be a part of it. And somebody told me that Georgia was amazing for locations to look like Texas. So we made Georgia look like Texas. And that's how it all happened. And that's great. And now it's coming to the theater. It's coming to the big screen. And people will be able to enjoy it, take in this great uh, baseball story. And so, Ricky, you mentioned that your father was a Baptist minister. And so can you just share about your own faith growing up and maybe even uh, your faith life today? Well, um, yeah, that uh, that, now that now you're now you're on my page. Um, yeah, I was raised up as a as a preacher's kid, as they call it, a PK. And you know everybody uh, laughs and makes fun of the PKs because they think that the preacher's kids are the wildest. You know that's what they believe, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, uh, my father uh, was—he uh, was a, a really tough Baptist minister. We were—we were affiliated with the um, with the um, instead of the Southern Baptist Convention, we were affiliated with the independent fundamental Baptist, which is the really strict Baptist church, very strict. And I was raised very strict with my father. Um, even all these problems I had or not, it didn't matter whether I did or didn't. In his eyes, I didn't. So uh, I had my studies. I had things I had to do in the church, seeing, seeing from seeing to quote scriptures, to learn scriptures, to, to, uh, to witness, learn how to witness to other people about Christ and those things. And so um, I took those very serious. And today I am so glad that uh, my father led me in that direction because um, everything that he led me in the direction to is today. I am ready today to fire. I'm ready to go still. So I've never, ever got away from it. I always stayed in tune with Jesus Christ my entire life. Mm. That's beautiful. And uh, as we talk about this movie, The Hill, coming to the theaters on August 25th, uh, I, I'm wondering, uh, Jeff, uh, what what impressed you so much about it? And now as it's as it's been filmed and directed and all of this, like, what, what's your hope that as people watch it will be their big takeaway? You said earlier, everybody's going to love it, no matter if you love baseball, hate baseball, if you're a believer or not, you're going to love this movie. 
So why are they going to love it or what are they going to take away from it? Well, I think it's a it's an organically natural thing that happens in this movie. And it was from the day I ever read Ricky's story. I mean, I hope that they walk out of the theater and they're just elated and inspired to do anything they anything that they were down on in their lives changes their mind. Um, we had a woman today that we interviewed us that had a whole family and the whole family saw the movie last night. And the kids absolutely loved it. The little boy went out back and picked up, she wasn't making this up, he picked up a baseball bat and a ball he had picked up in the garage in a couple of years and started hitting balls in the backyard to his dad. I mean, it was crazy. And that just got me emotional when she told me that. And then she said that they sat around and she interviewed the kids after the movie on what they took away from it. The morals, the inspiration, the will to never give up. And so I just hope that people... If you're a non-believer, you go to this movie, you'll become a believer. I hope that you also go to this movie and 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 say to yourself, "Wow, my life's really down, but this kid had it had he couldn't have been more down, and this family couldn't have been more down, and they persevered and they all came together." And if you ask me, what is this story about to you in one sentence? I would say this story is about a little boy trying to find the love of his father and a family coming together. I mean, you know, when people do call it a baseball film or a sports movie, but there's only a little sandlot game and in the in a high school game and then the end of the movie there's only really two games in the whole film that are very short there's hardly any baseball as Dennis Quaid said in an interview when I was giving him an interview backstage uh, behind the scenes Dennis said to me um you know what I love about sports movies Jeff when they're not about the sport that's mm -hmm. the best sports movies and so that's kind of this movie I mean if you love baseball you'll love it but if you don't you won't be affected because what I hate about sports movies is when you go, if it's a football movie, the whole movie's football. There's no story. And so I just feel like the story is really strong. It's going to resonate with everyone just because I, what I tried to do was touch on everybody's kind of sensibility of something that they identify with in the movie, a person, a situation or something. And I feel like I achieved that based on what I'm hearing all the time. And Ricky, this is your life story as it's been captured as a screenplay and now on film. So uh, what's your hope as people watch your story? Uh, what are you hoping that they walk away with? Well, now that since you're a, um, since you're a father, uh, now I can talk the, now I can talk the way I really want to talk. Uh, I hope that when they walk out that door, if, if uh, they don't know Christ, I hope they start at least thinking about it one way or the other. And then um, um, it touches them enough to know that, you know, whether you be a Christian or whether you're not a Christian or, you know, you're agnostic or you're stuck in the middle and you don't know where you are. I'm hoping that they, that they start searching and looking and, uh, and giving it, giving it a chance to, that uh, Christ could be a, come a good part of their life because they're going to see a miracle take place in this film to let them know that guess what this there's miracles take place and it's and it comes through jesus christ and uh and by by you and a father you being a father you know that as well as i do we pray you and i pray the same way and so um a uh, miracle did take place and uh, it's there it's right in front of their eyes and i hope that they get to see it and realize it before they walk out that door. Yeah, that's one of the most powerful things is, uh, you know, as a myself as a writer, like I've written stories. And so to know the impact that maybe something that I wrote in a devotional sense, that people are reading it, it's still impacting their lives. I interviewed some nuns a few months ago, and they their order wrote a children's book about like, basically a, a young girl becoming a nun and the whole process. And I said to the nuns that I interviewed, I said, well, wouldn't it be something if, if in a few, you know, 20 years from now, someone comes to your monastery door and says, I read the Brides of Christ, uh, you know, uh, children's book, and now I want to be one of you. And so it's kind of like this, like we never know, you know, whether it's a children's book, whether it's a movie, the impact that the message can have and how lives can be changed. And that's what you just said. So that's powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, people can yeah. see this movie on August 25th, showing uh, in theaters across the country. And so um, how can they learn more about the movie? Is there a website, uh, Jeff, that you direct? Yeah. 
too. Yeah, the hill is um the website for the hill is um the move the hill move dot com. So it's the hill mov dot com. And on Instagram, it's the hill move, the hill mov just by itself. One word. Well, wonderful. Well, and tickets will be coming out. Tickets will be on sale in about a week. Well, that's great. I'm looking forward to telling all the families in my parish they should go see it and uh, hoping that others along the way will too. So thanks so much, uh, Jeff and Ricky, for joining me today to share about this uh, wonderful sports movie that's not a sports movie all at the same time. Thanks, Father. Thank you very much. Thank you, my man.